Hello, I'm Jenny Rinker. I'm a researcher at DTU Wind Energy and welcome to this video tutorial on how to install Hawk 2 and to run it. So first off, the content of the video, we're going to start off with a very brief introduction to Hawk 2 um, and then we'll cover how to install the license file um, and then how to run Hawk 2 using the DTU 10 megawatt reference wind turbine. I will note that this video is primarily geared towards Windows users. However, we do have some information at the end for people who are running on Linux or Mac. So if that is interesting to you, please stay for the end so you can see that part. What you're going to need if you want to follow along with this video tutorial is, first off, we assume that you have applied for and received the license files. Um, if you are interested in doing that or haven't done that yet, um, you can check out the uh, pricing, pricing and instructions for completing those steps uh, under the tab called Hawk2 Info, uh, which is on the Hawk2 website uh, given in that link there. And then you also need to have the DTU 10 megawatt model downloaded on your computer. You can also find that on the Hawk2 website. Uh, it's under the tab called Download, and then there's a subtab called Hawk2 Model. And lastly, most important thing is that I'm sure that some of this information will become out of date or we will have new information. So please check the video description to see if there are any errata that are posted. Um, and there's a bunch of links and things down there for more information. So please do read that um, maybe at the end of the video. So first off, welcome to Hawk2. If you're watching this, you're hopefully interested in installing it. Um, if you don't know what it is, um, it is essentially a multi-body aeroelastic code. Uh, Hawk itself stands for Horizontal Axis Wind Turbine Simulation Code. That too stands for second generation. Um, despite the name being Hawk 2, uh, it is more than just horizontal axis turbines. Um, there's a lot of flexibility in terms of what you model with Hawk 2. Um, and there are many other features besides just aeroelastic time marching, um, which I'm not going to get into. Um, this is just a, a teaser, you could say. So one thing to note is that it does require a license to run, so you do need to go through the licensing process. Um, there are different licensing tiers depending on if you are, for example, an academic user or an SME, etc. Um, so do please check out the Hawk2 website um, for information on the most up-to-date licensing. Um, that can, of course, be subject to change. Um, and one nice thing is that um, several of these tiers do include access to Hawk2 support staff, um, which I think is quite useful if you have some sort of issue with your model and um, have need for a bit of assistance in figuring that out. So um, having this paid license does allow you to uh, reach out to the support staff and ask for help. Okay, so let's get into our live uh, demo of how we install the license files into Hawk 2, and then eventually we'll get into how to run it. So I have three folders here on my desktop, which you should also uh, have on your computer if you want to follow along. The first off is I have the 32-bit version of Hawk 2, 12.9 um, is the release that I have here. I have the uh, license managers that I was sent by the Hawk2 support after my license agreement was accepted. And lastly, I have the version 9.1 of the DTU 10 megawatt reference wind turbine. And it's important to note that uh, this model has 32-bit compiled libraries, which means that this version I have here uh, can only run with 32-bit Hawk2. So that's why I have chosen 32-bit Hawk2 for this. But the installation process for 64-bit Hawk 2 is exactly the same. So we'll go ahead and show how it works. So if I open my Hawk 2 folder here, there's a bunch of files. You honestly don't need to worry about most of those files. They essentially are there to help support Hawk 2. So let's see how we update our license files. So Hawk 2 is shipped with files called Hawk License and License Manager. Um, these files will probably not work on your computer, 
Um, so we need to install the new license files, which were sent to you by Hawk2 Support, that have been updated to include information from your computer. So since I'm using 32-bit Hawk2, I'm going to go ahead and go into the Win32 folder here. And you can see I have three options. I have Hawk2 License, License Manager, and something License Manager underscore HS2. This third one, HS2, is for HawkStab2. So I'm not going to use it. I will instead copy both Hawk2 License and License Manager over here. And I want to replace the files. So this is with the new information about my computer. And believe it or not, it's that easy. So now your Hawk2 uh, folder should be ready to go. You can test it um, very quickly by clicking the top bar in your Windows uh, File Navigator. You hit CMD and enter. And we can test very quickly by entering hawk2mb.exe, hit enter. And this is the incorrect, this is not the correct way to call hawk2, but we are just looking for the words here at the end, license verified dash OK. And that means that our license is valid and we can now go forward with the rest of the setup. So hawk2 is verified, you've updated your license files. Now, one thing about this current configuration is I have my Hawk2 folder on my desktop, which I personally don't like. I like having it somewhere else, um, a little bit hidden. So I have a Hawk2 folder where I have all of my Hawk2 versions. Um, and so I'm just going to head and go move this Hawk2 folder in here. And there we go. So now you can see, there it is, I have Hawk2 12.9 Win32 right there uh, where I want it. One last thing that I prefer to do, this is optional, but I like to add this folder to my uh, path variable um, for reasons that you'll see later. It makes it a little bit more convenient to uh, call Hawk2 if you do this. So I'm going to go through that very quickly um, if you want to add your Hawk2 folder to your path, uh, you can go ahead and Google it, um, and there should be instructions on how to add a folder to your path variable. But to do that, um, this PC properties, going to open up a system uh, window here, and I'm going to click advanced system settings on the right. And now it's opened up a new window, and I want environment variables right here. Path variable, going to edit that. And here at the bottom, I will say new, and I'm going to paste in my path to my Hawk2 folder. So that is now done. So that's the final setup that I wanted for Hawk2. And that's, uh, that's it, actually, for configuring Hawk2. Um, the next step is we will show very quickly on how to run Hawk2. So to do that, I have again downloaded the DTU 10 megawatt reference wind turbine. So if we open that, you can see here are our model files. We have the control binaries. So these are dynamic linked libraries. Again, this version is a 32-bit um, DLLs. And this file here, this HTC file, is the main file for HawkStab2. That's why it has an underscore HS2. And in the HTC folder, we have the input file that we want to run in Hawk2, which is this one here. I have modified it slightly, um, where it is only a one second simulation, because I wanted it to run very quickly for this demo. I believe the default is 1000 seconds, but we're not going to do that today. Now, the most important part about running Hawk2 is that you need to run it from the folder where your control and data files folders are. So if I, for example, open a command window in the default folder, so that would be Windows R, enter CMD. You can see it's located in a folder called C users and then my username, which is rink. Now, 
if I tried to run Hawk2 with this file, but in this location, it wouldn't work. So I need to be here in this folder. There are two ways I can do that. I can either use the command cd, which stands for change directory, and then I could copy this folder path, paste using right click, and then hit enter. And now you can see that I have changed my current location to be in the DTU 10 megawatt uh, folder. So I, I personally find that method to be a little bit cumbersome. Uh, so instead, what I prefer is just to use a shortcut, essentially, which is you can click um, on this uh, path up here in the file navigator. And if you hit CMD, enter, uh, it will open a command window in that uh, folder, which is very convenient. So we're in the correct folder. Now we just need to figure out how to run uh, Hawk2. So the general way to call it, um, it actually tells you, if you call it incorrectly, you, it's, you see down here, wrong number of arguments, usage, exe file, space, htc file. So let's go ahead and follow that method. So um, if I had not added Hawk2 to my path, I would need to give the full path to the um, Hawk2 mbexe. Um, I could either type it in, um, or you can also click and drag, and it will uh, finish the path for you. So there's our path to our executable space, and then I need to give the path to my HTC file, which is in the HTC folder, as you remember, and enter D, and then I hit tab to autocomplete, and now we have the executable, we have the HTC file, and now we hit enter. So everything is loaded with success. My license is verified. It loads all of these uh, DLLs, these compiled libraries that are used in this particular model, and it's done. So I have my log file is here. This is where all of the errors will be printed. I have my results files here. This is very nice. So. The last thing to note is since I added this folder to my path, I don't need to do this shenanigans with clicking and dragging. I can just type hawk2mb.ext and then give my path to my HTC file and it once again will run. So that's why I prefer to add um, the hawk2 folder to my path. It makes it just easier for calling hawk2. So that finishes the part of running Hawk2. Um, we'll just finish off with a little bit of information about Hawk2 on uh, Linux and on Mac computers. So Linux, uh, relatively recently, as of the 12.9 release, um, the Hawk2 software is now officially supported on Linux. It's part of the license agreement, which is pretty great. Um, so the Linux version of Hawk2 is now distributed on the website. Uh, as you saw in the license manager folder, there's also a Linux license, so that's pretty cool. Um, however, if you're running a model, so as you saw with the DTU 10 megawatt, there are these compiled libraries, and those by default are shipped with 32-bit windows. There are other versions, um, shared objects for Linux available. Um, please check out the video description to see where you can find all of those different um, shared libraries for Linux because you will need to replace those. Mac is unfortunately a little bit more complicated. Um, it is not currently supported on Mac in any way, so it is not part of the license agreement. However, there are ways that you can run Hawk2 on Mac perhaps, but it is going to be a little bit up to you to get this up and running. Um, we have seen some users have access, uh, if you have a Mac with an Intel chip, uh, you can use Bootcamp and then you can have a Windows partition um, if you go ahead and Google, you know, Bootcamp, Windows, um, Mac, uh, you should you should see some instructions on how to do that. Uh, it's relatively straightforward. Um, and then you'll have a Windows partition, and all of this information in the video will be applicable for you. For those of you with a newer Mac, which has these Apple M1 chips, um, it's a little bit tougher because there's not really currently a, a released Windows version that is compatible with that chip. 
Um, so you'll have to do a bit of digging to see if there's a way to get a Windows version that is compatible with 64-bit executables. Um, it's a little bit complicated. Um, so if there's any way that you can run on a different distribution um, or a different laptop, um, that's probably going to be a little easier. Um, if you do get something running, uh, please do free, feel free to contact us and let us know uh, how you got it, and we can provide that information for other users. So lastly, I just want to remind you once again to uh, read the errata that is in the video description. Again, we're going to update it uh, if we have any uh, corrections or new information. Uh, and lastly, if you have a paid license, um, we do encourage you to reach out to the Hawk2 support. Um, if you have any questions, um, this instruction wasn't clear, uh, any of that. Um, otherwise, we wish you a lovely day and happy simulating.